Welcome to Debutante Renegade. Today, Lego Your Ego Part 2. We're going to try to recognize those ego thought loops that we all get stuck in and how to get ourselves out. But first, if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, hit the notification bell, and thank you so much for watching. So, one thing I wanted to say about ego too is it's not just ego, having an ego isn't just being an arrogant person who thinks that they're better than everybody else, better looking and this and that. You know, I think we talked about that a little bit last time, what the ego actually is, but I think that there is this preconceived notion that a person with an ego is this arrogant person, but we all have egos. Right? So a little recap there. We all have egos and our ego is, is, is the opposite of our true sense of self. It is our false identity. It is the part of us that identifies with external things. Whereas the true self is our awareness, our consciousness, and our presence. And by presence, I mean when we are present, when we are truly in the moment. That's our presence. When the ego is steering the ship, people believe what their egos tell them about what they need to feel okay, to feel important, and to feel alive. This belief ties their identity to the ideas their egos project in their minds, which are inherently insatiable. The vision of self that the ego creates is an imaginary self that can never be attained. This is why we call it the false sense of self. So the ego is problematic because it can't handle change. It tells you that the universal rule of constant change does not apply to the vision of self it convinces you to believe in. It convinces you to resist changes it views as negative, such as losing something you love. It convinces you to resist changes such as losing something you have. And it convinces you to crave changes that it sees as positive, such as wanting something you don't have. In either case, the ego constantly resists the present and it tries to control itself by controlling change. And that's impossible because things are always going to change. The ego cannot control change. Change is bound to happen. It is an inevitability. This is what makes the ego insatiable and never satisfied. So one way that I think many of us have experienced the manifestation of our ego is when we're in the middle of working and we are very focused and somebody calls us or interrupts us, we get very frustrated, very annoyed because the sense of self we have as someone who needs to be not interrupted in order to get work done has been disrupted. Our self-image of a very dedicated person gets shattered when we get interrupted because our reality is losing alignment with the image in our minds that we are dedicated and cannot be interrupted. So the ego resists the change, the phone call, the interruption, etc. And the ego is the thing that makes you feel upset or frustrated in that moment because of its resisting change. That is why you feel upset or frustrated. Thing is, is the interruption doesn't actually change who you are or the world or anything. And you could simply choose to be interrupted and then get back, right back to the focus that you had before. But because your ego convinces you that working without interruption is essential for you, you will be upset every time you're interrupted. But what if that interruption was something tragic, like a friend or family member calling up that someone had passed away? If that were the case, how crazy would it be to cling to this idea that you can't be interrupted? Your friend needs comforting. You might need comforting. And this isn't to say that concentration and not being interrupted 
aren't important to one's work. Those are very beneficial things, concentrating and not being interrupted. But we, it's just an example that we don't have to let our ego dictate how we feel about every single little thing. Building your concentration can be incredibly beneficial to your life, but that doesn't mean that you can't be interrupted. We have to be capable of being interrupted and being able to get right back to our ability to concentrate because that's life and change is always happening. One of the most prominent ego traps we find ourselves in is complaining. And I I feel like I've said it in other videos, you know, this is a really common thing we do in our culture, but it's, it is really unhealthy. And it is in fact an ego trap. Now it might seem like complaining is a way of kind of venting after a long, hard day, et cetera. And I'm not saying that we don't need to vent sometimes, but complaining and especially frequent complaining and constant complaining, it carries with it a hook that is set for a constant ego trap that that for which you can never escape complaints hook you into the past or the future and they take you out of the present you know you might be complaining about something that happened earlier or you might be complaining about something that's not going to happen in the future but there's this hook because complaining becomes constant it becomes a constant incessant behavior When you're complaining, you're no longer in the present moment where you can just accept the reality of what is. You are caught in this ego trap, ego loop. You're trapped in this mental image of the past or an imagined future. And one of these, you know, ego loop, ego trap things could be if you perceive somebody to be an asshole to you and you think that person is always an asshole to you every time you talk to that person or interact with that person you're going to be attaching this precept idea that this person is an asshole and you're actually never really being in the moment with them or giving the the benefit of the doubt even if they stop being an asshole or they change for the better you're still trapped in this idea that they are an asshole and they're always an asshole to you and you're going to nitpick the situation and your mind is going to manipulate you into seeing every situation with that person as them being an asshole to you. Your mind may convince you that it's a must to complain because everybody does it. You can stop complaining whenever you want. And it's the easiest way to blow off that negativity. Your ego wants you to believe this because complaining leads to more complaining. And this means more chances to hook you into the ego trap and stop being in the present. But there are other options. You could try playing some music, going for a bike ride, a run, playing your favorite sport, hanging out with your dog, cooking, and even taking a few deep breaths. These are also ways to accomplish the same thing that complaining does. So why not do one of those things instead? Another ego trap is this one where we tell ourselves that in order to be happy, we must accomplish X. You know, in order to be happy, you know, I must get to this weight. In order to be happy, I must make X amount of dollars. In order to be happy, I must buy this car. In order to be happy, I must date someone that looks like this. We begin to believe that in order to be happy, we must achieve something or do something. This is an ego trap. And this is echoed so much in society that it's reinforced by pretty much everyone that we know and everywhere we look and throughout culture. How the ego trap shows itself in these situations is that once you obtain those things that you told yourself would make you happy, suddenly the goalpost is moved. Once I get this promotion, I'll be happy. But you get that promotion and then you want another promotion. Once I make X amount of dollars, I'll be happy. You get X amount of dollars, then the the goalpost moves to higher. Once I get so-and-so as my girlfriend or boyfriend, then I'll be happy. Once again, the goalpost moves. It's never enough. It's never enough and we're left feeling constantly unhappy, like we don't actually have the things that we want. 
even though we keep getting what we think we want, but then we always want more. So to be clear too, I'm not saying that you shouldn't aspire to achieve things. Achieving things is wonderful. You should definitely go for that promotion and you should go for that girl or that guy and you should go for making that amount of money in that car and whatever. But to attach the idea of your happiness to those things is where you set yourself up in an ego trap. You have to detach the idea that these things will make you happy. Of course, you want to achieve things. Of course, you want to have goals and you can be satisfied with yourself for achieving your goals. But don't believe, don't allow yourself to believe that these things are going to make you happy because they won't. Your happiness comes from your present state of being and accepting what is and not from those things which you obtain. It's fine to feel satisfied from an achievement, but achievements are not the only way to feel satisfied and happy. And realizing this is key for disarming this ego trap. There are many ways to have enjoyment and fulfillment and happiness that have nothing to do with achievement, like spending time with people that we love, like playing an instrument or doing or cooking doing anything for the joy of it and not for the sense of achievement is how we show ourselves that we can have happiness without achievement however we must be careful that we don't also set a trap with those things say we really enjoy playing music and it gives us a sense of joy well if we decide that you know we want to play Ozzy Osbourne crazy train by December 1st and we set that deadline and then we don't achieve that goal and therefore are unhappy, then you are once again setting an ego trap for yourself. Learn to play that song because you like that song and you want to play it on the guitar, right? Not because you set this this date and and only when you achieve that and only when you achieve it will you be happy. Don't set that trap. Learn to play the song for your joy of it. And if you have you can set goals but don't tie your sense of fulfillment to achieving those goals. Learn to allow yourself to have joy in things without needing to feel like you need to achieve something. And you don't need your ego to achieve things. You can still achieve many great things without your ego. That is the truth. The difference is when you achieve things without your ego, you won't feel bad when those things inevitably change or fade as they inevitably will. When the ego is not involved, you can appreciate that things change, that that's inevitable, and allow yourself to move into new places and achieve new things. When you can genuinely accept that achievements are not required to make you feel okay, that's when you free yourself from this ego trap. You don't need to be anything more than you are in this moment. You are enough as is. You don't need to achieve anything or to change anything in order to be enough, despite what your ego might be trying to tell you. When you can eliminate that background anxiety and that need for constant achievements, then you can step into the joy of pure presence. And when you can emancipate yourself from the bonds of this ego trap, that's when you can truly step into having a beautiful life and feel more happy and more fulfilled by being present in the moment in a place of acceptance and in a place of allowing joy without the need for achievement. I hope this was helpful. I would love to hear any of your thoughts, stories, Let me know any ways that you feel like your ego keeps you trapped or any ways that you've found to free yourself from your ego. I would love to hear. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a beautiful rest of your day.